where we'll be able to get some really hands-on touch base. So thank you very much. So staying on the same uh, connection with Samus, I'm really excited to uh, welcome Mohimi, Mohini Venkatesh to the stage. Mohimi is working with a very, very exciting project, Waliku, uh, with Save the Children. And uh, will show us a little bit about a zero out of school children project in Rwanda. So Mohini, welcome. And we'll open the presentation here. There we go. Thank you so much. Sorry, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much, Sophia, and the organizers of this conference for giving uh, Waliku and me this opportunity to present our work. Um, I lead the Waliku team at uh, Save the Children, uh, and we provide digital tools uh, for data capture uh, and analytics on Save the Children's education projects and also for other organizations. So today I'm going to speak to you about getting to zero out of school children using technology. So when we talk about digitizing data, it's about what's the purpose behind it. Here we have a very ambitious goal and uh, before I get into the details of the project, I'd like to just give you a brief overview of who we are, what we do, uh, the Zero Out of School project, and then the use of DHIS to CMIS that you just saw a demo of uh, in the project. So as I mentioned earlier, we are a Save the Children team, and we provide bespoke digital tools for the needs of projects to address uh, issues around communication and uh, data for stakeholders uh, who are working with school-age children. And this then helps identify barriers in children's education, uh, but it could also be their health and other aspects of their uh, learning journey. And through dashboards, uh, decision makers at the school level, at the district level, uh, or at the national level can um, make the right uh, decisions uh, to improve uh, the intervention quality. So these are the suite of tools that we use. Uh, we have our own in-house solution, Waliku Admin and Waliku Class, uh, that we've developed uh, at Save the Children, but we also use third-party solutions such as uh, DHIS2, Kobo Toolbox, uh, as well as uh, Power BI for visualization, and uh, ComCare, um, which we intend to use as well. So our experience of DHIS2 is not new. We've been uh, closely working with Note and uh, other colleagues uh, in DHIS2, his Mozambique, uh, his Uganda for the last uh, three years since 2021 and uh, since then we have uh, implemented several pilots um, mostly in Ethiopia, Mozambique um, and that's given us uh, a lot of good experience uh, using uh, the platform for individual uh, learner and staff uh, attendance tracking as well as tracking the um, service provision for a school eye health project that happened in Ethiopia, where we were screening individual children, recording their results, and then uh, referring them for follow-on evaluation by a mobile eye clinic team. So we use the tracker capture program there as well. So all of our work has been on longitudinal data of individual uh, learners and staff, and our most uh, recent project is the one in Rwanda. So the three on top, as you see, are our current live projects, and the two below are the ones that we've uh, completed last year. Um, and now coming to the project in Rwanda, it is uh, a joint collaboration between the uh, Miniduk, the Ministry of Education, 
in Rwanda, education above all, uh, that has its uh, foundation, um, education, educate a child, as well as save the children. Um, the project goal is to ensure improved access to education and retention of all children uh, in primary schools in Rwanda. So it's a nationwide project. It's across all districts in the country, reaching over 3,000 primary schools, um, both government and government aided. And the duration of this project is for five years. It started last September, goes on till 2028. And the total number of out-of-school children uh, that the project hopes to identify is uh, 177,000 uh, plus, and to see that they once identified are enrolled into school and continue to stay in school through the end of the project. So 100% retention of all out-of-school children. So we know the problem around uh, these children is that many of them don't enroll or even if they enroll, they drop out. Uh, due to various reasons, personal um, and uh, environmental reasons. And, uh, and so the change we want to bring about is first to identify them through nationwide identification process, enroll them and see that uh, every year all children are enrolled in time, and then to track the absences um, of not just these out-of-school children, but of all learners, and to see that they stay in school, and have an early warning system for the schools to identify any child who is chronically absent so that they can take relevant action and see that they return to school. So the tools we're using for this project uh, for identification to enrollment um, are fourfold. Uh, we're using Kobo Toolbox and Power BI uh, for the identification process. And then the government has an enrollment system, so their EMIS already enrolls individual learners and provides them a unique ID. Uh, so it's called the SDMS system. And f after enrollment of uh, learners in the SDMS, um, we'll be utilizing DHIS2 CMIS for absence tracking. So this is uh, the overall high-level workflow of the out-of-school child identification to enrollment and absence tracking, where using Kobo Toolbox, um, we identify the children who are out of school. This is done through community um, stakeholders, multidisciplinary committees. Um, that data is then automatically then displayed on a Power BI dashboard through a REST API integration. And um, once the children are enrolled, these out-of-school children are enrolled in the STMS, then uh, that data is then integrated with the DHIS2 platform for absence tracking. So just to take a, a, a now a next level view of what this means, uh, so, in terms of setup of the system, first, all the master data is set up on DHIS2 that configures the organization units, um, as well as the children um, and their classes, etc. This information is based or mirrors what is on the SDMS, the government EMIS system. And the next part is the integration with the STMS to pull that information into the CMS application. So there isn't any uh, bulk import of uh, learners that's happening from the front end. It, uh, we expect it to be a back end integration. Uh, and then this data itself, it's stored in the database on the DHIS2 database, but on the government servers. And for visualizations, we intend to utilize the inbuilt dashboards on DHIS2. And for any other stakeholder uh, not related to, directly related to the schools, uh, to use Power BI. Uh, perhaps uh, people who are monitoring the project. So 
to get to 3,200 and plus schools is a, is a big uh, undertaking. And uh, in order to get to that number, we've uh, uh, designed our rollout plan in phases. The first phase is a pilot phase, which we are currently undertaking, where we're introducing CMS Web that you saw the demo of just now uh, across 30 schools. Uh, so one per district uh, with the aim of schools um, getting familiar with the system, getting their feedback on the use of the system, seeing what uh, user behaviors we um, uh, identify and evaluating the results from that first phase uh, before we introduce the solution to all the sectors across the country. So 416 schools across the country in the next academic year, which begins in September of uh, 2024. So that will be for both the CMIS web and now that Android is also ready and uh, once it's tested uh, and the schools are trained on it, it will also be rolled out uh, in the September to December uh, period. And uh, next year, 2025 onwards, once we've reached to that 416 schools, we'll be incrementally uh, rolling out the solution to more and more schools across all districts of the country. So just to give you a bit of a deeper dive into our first phase pilot in 30 schools, the process we followed is first we did a set of formative activities where we did an assessment. Um, and this was a self-assessment by schools to report on their access to technology. So they uh, filled out uh, a form that collected information on number of mobile devices, laptops, internet connectivity, electricity. Um, and that then helped us to understand what their context is. We also got an export of the STMS data and we were able to see the completeness of that information, the fields um, that uh, are mostly reported on to then define what the um, configuration of the enrollment should be on the SDM, on the CMIS. Uh, so we made adjustments to the workflow based on access to technology, uh, whether uh, teachers could use CMIS Web right away in the classroom or they would use a paper-based system first and then move and then digitize that data. Um, and after making those adjustments to the workflow and the customization to the tool, we uh, conducted a training of trainers. Um, here, these are district officers across the 30 districts who now know how to do single enrollments. If there are children who are missed out from the backend import, they can enroll those children. How to edit enrollments if any information has been incorrectly added or not added, uh, like the, the section of uh, the class the child is in. They can do that. And then the main task, the only task really that a teacher would need to do is the absence tracking. So we're not putting a lot of burden work on the school only to make those edits, additions, and take attendance daily. So that's where we are right now. The training of schools is going to happen in the coming days. And uh, once that's done, we expect uh, the schools to use the CMIS app over the uh, coming month and a half before schools close for the year. So thank you, everyone.